Welcome back guys. Today we're taking a look at the Expert Sinmat sleeping pad. This is the winter edition. It is the long wide version of the pad. I got it for my trip to Sweden last September. When I saw the temperatures dropping rapidly, I decided it would be a good idea to get something else. I've been looking at them Expert mats for a while, but there are so many that I just couldn't decide which one to get. There wasn't much stock available either. And to be honest, at first, I totally resisted the expert mats. I just thought they looked like the pads we would see people use on the beach or by the pool. And I didn't think they would be any good. But spoiler alert, they're very good. So um, let's start with the pack size. This is the long wide version, so it will be a bit bigger. Expert produces possibly way too many different variations of their pads so it can be quite overwhelming to try to figure out which one to get if you think you would need some help with that and if you want me to make a separate video on that topic helping you decide which sleeping pad to get let me know down below in the comments so size wise this isn't small by any means let's compare it to a nalgene bottle it's much bigger as we would expect, this is a winter sleeping mat. This is the mat that I've been using before. This is the C2 Summit Etherlite XT. The difference isn't that big, actually. The Expert is just a little bit thicker, and it's, of course, because of the extra insulation. And in terms of weight, there's less than 100 grams difference between them. So the Expert comes in at 760 grams. This includes the schnozzle bag which we'll talk about in a bit the schnozzle bag is 55 grams and 37 grams for the bag including the repair kit so let's get it all out schnozzle bag we'll come back to that this is the pad it has two valves and this is a really good system one is only for deflation so this is fully open. The other one has a valve that you can press on to release some air. And if you want to use this to fully get rid of the air, they've attached this thing that you can stick into here and that will just keep it open. So the valves are on the bottom side of the pad and you have it inflated. This is the top, this is the bottom. They would be close to your head. Seat to Summit, for example, decided to place them on the top corner not on the bottom so you can reach them more easily if you want to deflate it. But they do have only one valve which is integrated and it can be a little bit tricky to remember which one to open in the middle of the night. Here there at least is a better system because you can always sort of feel where this thing is and then you use this valve. Let me quickly show you what I mean with the C2 Summit one. This is one valve and you would need to open this side to deflate it but if you pull on here on top instead of on the side then you open up the whole thing so now hopefully you understand a little bit better why i think this is a much better system so a little bit about the specs the r value on this thing is 5.2 which should be okay up to minus 20 degrees Celsius. So the pad is 197 centimeters long. That is 6.4 and a little bit. I'm 6.4, 196 centimeters. This pad is only one centimeter longer, taller than I am. And I really wish it was slightly bigger, just like the C2 Summit. That one is 201 or 202 centimeters, which is perfect. With this one, I find that my feet are hanging off the pad just a little bit. And especially if I have a larger pillow, that makes things a bit annoying. Speaking of annoying things, it's this schnozzle bag. I understand what they were trying to do. And in theory, it sounds like a good idea, but it just didn't work out that well, I think. A few things I don't like about it. First of all, the schnozzle itself. When you attach this here, what happens is, okay, we're gonna grab this back and you see already it got entangled, right? If you then try to inflate it, it just gets in the way. Second thing is they thought, let's make this bag bigger. And they also make 
even bigger bags for the Mega Man. This thing is huge and bigger isn't always better. Let me try to untangle this. So you would try to get some air into it and now you need to roll it a little bit to close it and from here you can start inflating it. Let's see if I can use the one from Sea to Summit and then you can see the difference. So what they've done at Sea to Summit is first of all, they're using the storage bag so it's not wasted fabric. And here is the where the air sits. This is just a little bit smaller and the thing I like about this better is the place where you blow the air in is much smaller so you can just blow the air in and you can just hold it so you can squeeze it here and you don't need to roll that huge bag you see you can just close this and hold this with one hand it doesn't have a nozzle so when you press on it you are pressing on the valve itself so with that you need to just lift it a little bit So yes, there's a bit less air in here and you'll need to repeat it maybe a few more times than you would with the big bag. But I just find this to be way more manageable, especially if you're in a smaller tent where there isn't a lot of space. You already have your gear in there, you're trying to get in and then you need to deal with this huge schnozzle bag that just gets entangled. So yes, I just prefer this one over the schnozzle bag. It may be a personal preference. If you've used it, let me know in the comments what you think of that. Let's continue looking at the sleeping pad itself. So here we are with the pad fully inflated. And as I lean over it, I feel the warmth coming from the pad even now. When you lay down on it, you will feel it instantly as well. It's really amazing how it works. There's a synthetic insulation in this pad. If you get the down mat, you will have down insulation. So this is the UL version and it uses a 20D fabric. It has a honeycomb pattern and it feels very nice to the skin. It is anti-slip and it is also a little bit stretchy to give you that extra comfort. What I really like about this pad is that it isn't that noisy. Of course, you will always hear something. I don't know if you can hear it now as I'm moving, but it really isn't that bad. I was very skeptical about these vertical baffles but I must say they are very, very comfortable. The outer baffles on either side, they're a little bit bigger and this is just to help you stay in place so you won't roll off the pad and also your elbows won't roll off as easily. The bottom of the pad doesn't feel like plastic either. What's interesting about this pad is it's nine centimeters thick. The C to Summit is supposed to be 10, but this one definitely feels like it's thicker because I like to sleep with the pad slightly deflated. And when I sit up, I don't feel like I'm sitting on the ground immediately as I do with the C to Summit. It can also be because of the insulation that is in here. So in conclusion, very happy with this pad. It's very comfortable. The two things I wish were different is the size. I wish it was just a little bit larger and I'm not a big fan of the schnozzle bag, but I can live with it. If you're looking for a comfortable pad, I would definitely look into the expert pads. Like I mentioned earlier, I did resist them for a very long time, but I wish I got one sooner. So now it's time for you to hit that subscribe button and then you can watch this video next.